that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as Known for his befuddled, foppy yet lovable roles, Hugh Grant's really mastered the art of the rom-com. His forte being characters that maintain that positive and cheeky energy, even in the face of any troubles that might come along. Plus, his unsuspecting charisma's helped to woo many of Hollywood's leading ladies on screen, to make him one of Britain's most bankable actors ever. Hailing from Hammersmith, a proud middle-class area of West London, Hugh developed his love of the arts and acting while attending Oxford University. While completing an art history degree, he made his big screen debut in Privileged, a film about an Oxford undergraduate's bed hopping, which of course didn't require too much character research. But it was four weddings and a funeral that flung open the doors to Hollywood, cementing Grant's image as the clumsy, stuttering, but ultimately likeable on-screen personality. This performance would set the benchmark for Hugh's career, and understandably, he was shocked by the film's success. No, I assumed it would be a turkey, like all my other films. I... Uh, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I was, I was incredibly surprised. I mean, I was, you know, virtually booked on a plane to Peru when that film came out, because I thought it would be so embarrassing for me, but... But the only flight Hugh needed was back to L.A. to attend the Golden Globe ceremony. He picked up the Best Comedy Actor Award for his romantic role opposite Andy McDowell. But in Hugh's typically understated fashion, he claimed he was just happy to be employed. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's flabbergasting, you know, it's just... Um, you have to remember, it's unusual for me even to have a job, let alone to, uh, you know, to, to have a success or, uh, you know, get a prize. So um, I'm, you know, really pleased and I feel very, very um, smug, I think the word is. With all the hype surrounding Hugh after four weddings and a funeral, it would be his then partner, Elizabeth Hurley, that upstaged him at a London premiere of the film. She stunned the red carpet by wearing a Versace dress held together by safety pins that stole the headlines and began a decade-long obsession with the pair. This media frenzy went into overdrive after Hugh was caught on Hollywood's Sunset Boulevard for indecent conduct with prostitute Divine Brown. This put enormous pressure on their already public relationship, but against all odds, they continued on as a couple. I, I don't like the, uh, um, you know, the, the fact that I can't turn it off ever. It's, uh, it would be very nice to be able to go, just say, OK, today I'm, no one knows who I am, I can just go to the pub like an ordinary human being. That's, that's, the, that's, that's when the nightmare sets in. At this stage, Hugh was notorious for his reluctance to embrace the celebrity status, which was understandable after the huge amount of media harassment he'd already received from his short time in the media. So I always liked, I always liked the position in life of being a bit of a failure, really. Um, it was, it's more amusing to be a failure. Uh, being a success, I don't know, it's, it's, it makes it slightly awkward with your friends as well. You know. Because they, they react differently. And... Well, it's just embarrassing somehow. I don't know. And everyone's sort of waiting for you to misbehave or get too starry or prima donna ish. Right. And you feel like you're walking a, a very thin line. Luckily, Grant emerged from his misdemeanours virtually unscathed, reportedly receiving even more movie offers following the scandal. Although none were bigger than the chance to act alongside Julia Roberts in Notting Hill. This put Grant back on the map and the self-confessed worry ward admitted to feeling the pressure of working in this big budget flick. You can never say at the end of the film, well, it never quite worked, but it was jolly well tried, you know, we didn't have very much money. It, <laughs> it just matters, if it doesn't work, you're a, they hate you. <laughs> and they're paying you much more money, there's much more money committed to the whole film. So it's extremely frightening. Hugh's career was back on track, but his relationship with Liz Hurley had finally derailed. In 2000, the pair split, and the tabloids mourned the loss of one of the most glamorous couples of the 90s. This caused Hugh to reflect on the phenomenon of the famous dating the famous. I'm not quite sure why. I think it's something to do with, uh, if you're well known, it's like living in a very, very strange land. And, uh, you know, if you lived in an obscure corner of the Pyrenees, I think you are more likely to go out with someone who speaks the same language, you know, understands the same customs. Um, but more than that, I think it's, I've got a feeling it's to do with vanity and the actors love to go out with people as much like themselves as they can possibly find and so if the other person happens to have the same job I think that's a bonus. 
With a void in his private life, Hugh boosted his career by playing the role of Daniel Cleaver, the sleazy but appealing boss whose antics filled up many pages of Bridget Jones's diary. This character was a refreshing change for Grant, who was able to play the bad guy for once, culminating in one of the funniest on-screen non-macho fistfights with Colin Firth. Even during the film's promotional tour, there was plenty of British banter between the pair. I don't think anyone thinks he's a very good actor, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I think he had a good phase at the beginning of his career, but he, he's lost it, and I think you know, he'll be the first to tell you that. He's, he's got a bit, bit old, a bit fat. Um, you probably notice he's started to lose it around here, but he's got it jowly. And um, I don't know, he, he used to have a magic, which just seems to have deserted him. Taking a break from his sarcastic humour, Hugh fell into one of the best dramatic performances of his career with About a Boy. With this role, Grant perfected all the callow characters he'd done in the past and injected the part with more warmth and sensitivity than he'd ever previously displayed. But never too far from his roots, he balanced out this dramatic piece by teaming up with Sandra Bullock in the rom-com Two Weeks Notice. He allowed me to be the best that I could be in a, a film with this, of, of this genre. I, I, you know, I've said earlier that I think now I can put this genre to rest for myself because I've finally done it with the person who I'm supposed to do it with. And, he demands a lot from those around him because he demands even more from himself. And you want to please him. You want to step up to play. So I got a lot from him. And he's, he's the best partner I've ever had in something like this. He's, he's fantastic. With such a good rap from his co-star and the critics loving his dramatic side, what was Hugh's plan to continue building his success? I've never had a plan. I've, uh, I've been drifting. And uh, I've always wished I had more of a plan. I. Uh... Where does this fit in? Well, I, at the moment, it looks, uh, it, uh, I think, uh, you know, classically, aren't you supposed to do one arty-farty one and then one commercial one and then another arty-farty one? And um, I think about a boy counts as my arty-farty one, and this is, hopefully will be commercial. Uh, so then I got to find another arty one, and I don't, don't know where to look, really. So, but I think that's what people do. I think that's a good career plan. And that was the plan for Hugh as he embarked on a string of commercial and arty films that led up to his most memorable hit, Music and Lyrics. Grand stars as ageing boy band loser Alex Fletcher, opposite the free-spirited lyricist Drew Barrymore. During filming, Drew noticed Hugh's solid work ethic and underestimated comedic talent. Alex Fletcher is played by Hugh Grant, uh, who, you know, I think is a master of his domain. You know, he's really... You know, you think of romantic comedy and, and, you know, he just really goes hand in hand on it because he's done such amazing work. And he's done so many movies that I absolutely opt for, you know, to watch and, and love and escape into. Um, but he's really a comedian, too, you know. I mean, that's such a part of his trade and I can see him, you know, going off and thinking and really wanting to make it perfect. And um, he, works, he works very hard. He's very diligent about what he does. As we all know, Hugh achieved his notoriety by repeatedly playing the leading man in American romantic comedies. Love it or loathe it, this feeling of deja vu can be partly attributed to the pairing of Grant and writer-director Mark Lawrence. They've made three films together over the past decade, and their most recent project, Did You Hear About the Morgans, sums up their style of filmmaking. It is almost impossible to get me to do a film in the first place, uh, and the only thing that really um, can tempt me is if the script makes me laugh, and Mark's stuff does make me laugh. I think he's a real comic genius, um, and will be regarded as such in years to come. And uh, I think this is his best script. I'm sexually attracted to him, and all the energy just comes from that. And um, no, I, I think he's one of the great actors we have. I think if you're doing a romantic comedy, Honestly, in the history of movies, uh, if you were to make a list of the ten greatest, he would absolutely be in there, so it's a privilege and an honour. Recently, Hughes sailed into the unknown by voicing a pirate captain in the kids' claymation film Pirates Band of Misfits. Now, director Peter Lord clearly didn't choose Hugh for his rough, swashbuckling image, but more his proven comedic ability. I wanted the comic actor, and I think that Hugh was the best, you know, just his comic timing. You know, people, because he's rather, because he looks pretty good as well, people are, uh, tend to be rather upset, you know, obsessed with him as a sort of a romantic comedy actor, but I was interested in the, in the comedy bit, less than 
more yeah. than the romantic bit, yeah. And she's got brilliant, brilliant comedy time. So it seems Pirates Band of Misfits has broken Hugh from his normal acting genre into a new realm of his film career. So why did Hugh stray away from his tried and tested formula? It was just an incredibly funny script. That's always been my main thing with accepting parts. It's, le it's less about the part than about whether the script works or not. And this was just an absolute diamond. It was classically funny and um, original and strange. And uh, I've never seen uh, anything of Ardman's which I didn't give a triple A rating to. I mean, they're just brilliant. They're sort of geniuses. Well, there he is, Hugh Grant, one of the most humble and grounded performers who certainly earned his stripes as a comedic actor and as a worthy dramatic actor. But it's true, he's often considered for a romantic comedy role, so only time will tell whether he's determined to break that mould. But in the genre of romantic comedy, few do it better, and he's certainly given us some characters that will be loved for many years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.tv.